All right, it's one o'clock. And we got two hours. So I've done this whole talk in 45 minutes to high schools and stuff. So I can definitely slow down a little bit with the two hours here. And um, so I do a lot of painting. I love to do plein air painting. And when you're a plein air painter, you really have to whittle down what the supplies are because you just need to be able to carry everything you need on, a, in a, on your back, okay? So here's one of my paintings. I've got this cityscape. I worked on this yesterday, so it's got wet patches and stuff fresh off the easel. But this is my oil painting bag. We're working with acrylic, but I'm going to show you how they're totally easily interchangeable because I, I use both all the time. So inside my bag, uh, what you need is uh, brushes, you need brushes, you need paints, okay? You need uh, a place to mix your colors. You need a place to wash your brush, okay? And that's about it. So let's go over that again. The rest of this is like a shirt, so I can wear a dirty shirt, and I got an apron in here. Um, I've got... Uh, I've got sunglasses and gloves and sunscreen, you know, just stuff you need, a hat to uh, when if you're going to be standing out in the sun for hours, okay? So let's take that aside and then if you guys look in front of yourselves, you have brushes, you have a palette where you're going to mix your colors, we're going to squeeze out colors for you, you've got a cup here, we're going to put water in it so you can clean your brushes, and uh, probably just a few paper towels, all right? So kind of like washing the brush. So I'm not going to go into the oil, all right? But the only thing that's different with the oil is you're going to use a different palette and different paints. You're going to use acrylic paints, not oil paints. Can I ask you when you go out with the oils, what do you typically carry? Like I always bring the same palette. Always the same palette. I don't necessarily use all the colors but I have all the colors okay. that I need. It's, a, it's white, cad yellow light, yellow ochre, cad orange, transparent red oxide, cad red, alizarin, crimson, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, phthalo green. About 10 colors. 10, 11, that's it. That's every damn color you need, okay? But, yeah, yeah. Um, it, but uh, the uh, acrylic, I've, when I've really used, I use acrylic mostly for underpainting when I'm starting a piece. Uh, but when I did use acrylic for some finished pieces, I would buy maybe a few more colors. It's a little more limited feeling. Okay, so instead of oil paint, we're going to use acrylic paint. All right, but if I was going to have you guys working in oil, I'd have these same colors or even less, Okay. The other thing I was talking about is the brush cleaner, the brush washer, all right? When I paint with acrylic, I have exactly the same brush washer, but this is filled with water. This is oil paint, so turpentine. So water is to acrylic as turpentine is to oil paint, all right? Water. We're going to put these aside because we're not working with oil. We're working with acrylic, but you can see how little really needs to change. Brushes, so then with oil paint, I use paper towels. With acrylic, I use rags. That's another difference. We got probably enough rags here if we want to. But otherwise, I think I saw a roll of paper towels around here somewhere. Okay, great. So we're getting close to having explained everything. What do we have again? We have a palette, we got paints, we got brushes, we got a brush washer, some paper towels, that's it. And then you need a canvas to, to, to paint on, all right? Just to show you guys how I store my brushes, I got one of these kind of like a sushi roller placemat thing. They sell them at art stores in different sizes. This is a sock. I put a little, I put a little piece of plastic at the end of the sock. The, all the brushes just fit right here. You know, I've got all different sizes of brushes. Here, let's pick some out now. I'm gonna get a couple of brushes like you guys got. And I can bum you guys some brushes if the w pieces, if the ones you got are a little too small or whatever. So I'll be on some spot and I'll have whatever canvas I'm going to work on and I'll just grab a few brushes and I figure, eh, that's good. 
four, that's fine. This is the only palette knife I really use ever, this one. And I don't mix colors with it, and I don't paint with the palette knife. But I will use the palette knife to move colors around. Oh, I need this white over in the corner. Oh, this yellow is getting in the orange. I'm going to move it off to the side a little bit. You know, so it, this moves paint around, but it's not a painting tool. I mix paints and I paint with brushes. So I encourage you guys, sometimes people do color theory classes and all the students are sitting there, you know, like mixing with the palette knife. It's very, it's kind of not, it's a little too precise feeling. So anyway, then, you know, uh, I could just, I just roll this up whenever I need. I put the plastic on the end. I can stick it back in the sock and it's ready to, you know, I can keep it in my backpack. And there you go. Uh, materials, materials, you know, um, with acrylic, I do like to have a, uh, a squirt bottle. It's helpful sometimes to keep things moist or damp. Um, and, you know, the, uh, we're just going to use water, so that's about all we need to worry about. Now, let me just start off this little talk. Here's a couple examples, I guess, of other, other versions of this, what we're going to try to do today as far as, you know, some colors. You can be crazier with the colors or more or less realistic, but it's this understanding of how light and shadow works, Okay. And to understand that, you just need, you need to have explained to you a few concepts. And a lot of people hear these, and they might hear them, and they, and they really don't know what it means, okay? And for me as a painter, I've always been trying to figure out, like, what is the secret, you know? Um, and I had color theory teachers in college, and they talk about, all these esoteric ideas with color and stuff that I understand now a little more, I guess, but stuff that just did not apply to me at all. It was just like, this isn't, make, this isn't helping me, you know? Um, I mean, I remember a teacher mixing a grayscale. I'm a big fan of the grayscale. Um, and, but not really doing it in a way that made any sense. You know, there was a teacher at Art Center who would teach the grayscale in the most inept time-wasting way that when I started calling it out, then the other students, like, I got in trouble, kind of, because I was like, this guy's wasting your time. This is the dumbest way to teach this idea, you know. But anyway, um, I remember reading this quote, and I always read it when I do this talk, and it's something that's in my mind all the time, except, like, you know, with music, you get to understand something to the point where there's just a perfect flow between what you're doing with your hands and your eyes or whatever. Um, and so uh, the first thing you got to remember about Vincent Van Gogh, this is a Van Gogh quote, is he was one of the last generations of artists who was pre-abstraction. The concept had ne not entered the human mind yet that an abstract splash of whatever, throw, expressionistically throwing paint randomly around on the canvas, that that would ever be painting was totally out of their mind. It wasn't a picture. So for him to say painting means using paint to express light and shadow, the illusion of form, space, volume, it is representation of the world whether you're being really realistic with it or really abstract with it where he was going, painting still meant it was synonymous with representing, okay? So when he says painting, he doesn't mean the act of painting. He means painting, representation. And what I had to understand a few things before I figured this out. Let me just read it. This is a quote uh, from a, a guy who's at the same insane asylum that Van Gogh's at, and Dr. Gachet had everybody paint. It wasn't just Vincent. They all, that was part of their therapy. So this one patient was there in Van Gogh and he's painting. And he frequently visited my home in Eindhoven. Once while I was painting in my garden, I suddenly heard behind me, look, yes, it's good that you're painting outdoors. You must do that often. I don't know how you're going to handle your colors, but that matters little. Just continue on. There is no better education than painting outdoors. 
you must always compare things thoroughly with one another, especially in tone. Painting is like algebra. That is to that as that is to that. And that quote totally went over my head for a while, okay? And, 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 and it might go over your head a little bit, but um, for him to say painting is like algebra, he means creating the illusion of light and shadow and different colored objects and different colored lightings is a mathematical function of the grayscale, okay? It's a song that you're playing, the notes. It's the same chord changes. There's an infinite number of variations, but with five chords, you can play 10,000 songs. You know, so there's, it's not, to say that painting is like algebra is not to suddenly make it like, oh, oh boring, I hate algebra. It's actually to say, oh, it, that, that you can understand exactly what you're doing. And then that part, that thought process, light and shadow, you can be a lot more, you can get more and more complicated with it and your understanding doesn't go away. So another thing about this quote, he says, I don't know how you will handle your colors, but that matters little. Okay, what he means by colors is I don't know how you're going to use your paint, your colors, your paints. I don't know what you're going to do with your paints. Yeah, there's a million different mediums and, and uh, different uh, liquids and uh, there's 500 more colors of tubes of colors and there's different this and that and, fan and you can get $200 brushes or $1 brushes or you could use a makeup pencil or who knows, you know. Um, but it doesn't matter. Because the understanding of how you use light and shadow is an understanding you can have and get even before you know how to handle your paint. You know what I mean? So, uh, and then the last thing is he says, painting is like algebra. That is to that as that is to that. And we're going to get to painting. I hope I'm not being too boring yet. I love art history and stuff. So the thing that... that took me a while to get from this quote because it, it didn't really have a lot of explanation in the context of the book that I read it. Um, but what he's saying, he's pointing at the guy's canvas and saying that is to that is that is to that. So flesh and light is to my beard hair in light as flesh and shadow is to my beard hair in shadow. That there's a chord that I'm playing. That is to that as that is to that. All right? And this is a white collar and a blue shirt in cool light. And this is a white collar and a blue shirt and a skin tone in a, in a light light. So that is Chiaro Scudo. Okay, that is one of the greatest discoveries of the Renaissance. Besides linear perspective, which is a drag. I hate linear perspective. You know, like when I got to figure out the perspective on this thing, it's one point perspective. I'm just going to tape a thread where the vanishing point is. Tick, 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 and just get a few things lined up. You know, it's like a trick. Linear perspective is a big drag. Okay, you know what it's like? It's like thinking that learning to read music is becoming a musician or getting good at music. It's got nothing to do with it. It's something good to know, you know, but linear perspective is kind of like that, okay? But there's a, f yeah, whatever. Um, so I want to just try to explain to you the painting is like algebra, that is to that, as that is to that issue is. We're going to mix colors and squish paint around a little bit. Um, so I think the first thing we'll want to do is just draw a really simple line drawing on your canvas panel. Pop open your canvas panel and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to move some of these things around. Uh, and, then we'll, and then we'll get into mixing colors and we'll just get right into mixing on the, on the canvas painting this thing and I got to make sure I don't go too fast I gotta I gotta drag this out for two hours okay but anyway uh, I like to kind of do my drawing I, you know I'll take a pencil and and it's got an eraser on it so just draw sort of like a light bulb shape okay and give yourself a little neck and then uh, draw your arms kind of coming off the side but you know you're obviously no one else is going to draw a beard unless Billy was doing it yeah, you know, but kind of just draw your hair and uh, you've got an apron, a red apron and a white shirt. I love it. You got skin tone, dark hair, white shirt, red apron. Thank Boom. You. Those are going to be the colors of your selfie. OK, um, I picked lousy colors today, but I'll just make it up. 
and the uh, drawing, a lot of people think, you know, there's this kind of misconception about drawing and you have to learn to draw before you can paint and, and um, you kind of don't. Like maybe get that, out, get that notion out of your head. Um, if I'm being honest, I think it took me about five years out of art school to reconcile drawing with my painting. I didn't get it. Oh, yeah, you know, just like a super simple, if, and if you need me to draw you, yeah, then just make it a nice clear line around there, and then we're going to divide it right down the middle, a line straight down the middle. <laughs> and that's the good thing about is just you can wobble, wiggle it, doesn't matter. We don't have any rulers here. Oh my gosh, put the ruler away. <laughs> you know, um, when it comes to drawing, just stop while you guys are working, I'll, ta I'll tell a little interesting story I love about Matisse and drawing. And, you know, let's say you got a, you're going to do a portrait of someone like Matisse would do, and you make an appointment, you've got a couple hours, you're going to spend a couple hours with this patron and do some drawing. And um, so you, you come in and you've got your, your book and your, and your pencil, and, and it's kind of like the art and fear thing. Oh my God, it's exactly like that. So <laughs> someone could spend two hours working on one drawing. Yes. And they could, they could sit there with an eraser and a pen and draw and erase and draw and do shading and da 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 da, da and work on one drawing for two hours. What Matisse would do is he would do a hundred drawings in one hour. And then he'd do another 50 in the second hour that were twice as big. Because he was trying to get to the point where he could just draw their likeness like wham, bam. You know, that he could just really quickly draw the essential lines and would look just like you or just like you. Boom, boom, boom. And when he was that familiar with the subject that he could just cat, like toss off their likeness almost like a caricature, then he felt ready to begin a portrait. That was what he needed. He didn't need to do one drawing rendered and perfect. And, oh, God, it's got, they probably figured by that time, geez, just trace a photo. I mean, get over it. That's what everyone's been doing since the 1880s. They're just lying about it half the time. Um, so, you know, I've gotten to the point where I can just kind of sign my likeness. Yay! You know, and you can see I drew my shoulder too far down and I erased it. And I drew this line a second and a third time till I got my shoulder in the right place and... And if that's what you guys need to do, you know, now draw it nice and draw it kind of dark. <laughs> Put a nice bold line around it, you know. Yeah, get, make a good firm decision. Decisions, decisions. Okay, and then we're going to put that aside because we're just going to start mixing some colors right off the bat. Let's put this aside. Yes. Now here's our colors. So I'm just going to go around and start squeezing some of these out for everybody here. So look out. We're going to start getting some paint. And uh, let's put like a, let's put the blue, let's put the blue there. Let's put the, uh, the red here. Let's put the yellow here. All right. Let's put the blue the red, the yellow. Acrylic, it's paint. Paint is paint. It's just got a different binder in it. In an oil paint, the binder is linseed oil. And in acrylic, the binder is, you know, whatever this plastic resin is. Acrylic polymer, right. Um, now, oil gets a bad rap. Uh, technically, it's safer than acrylic. 
And acrylic gets a bad rap in a different way. Gets a, gets a gets away with something that oil never gets away with, which is crazy too. Um, oh, we got to squeeze out. Okay, so uh, we're going to squeeze out some colors here. So let's make, a, make sure we're going to get some. You, it's working on your, your palette is as essential as your canvas because a lot of mixing, the mixing is happening here. This is where you're thinking. And we got plenty of paint. So if anybody runs out of any color, let me know. So now we got red, yellow, and blue. Does anybody know what, the, what they call these three colors? The primary colors, that's right. And then there's the, uh, and I l always use brown. Brown gets a bad rap too. I'm a big fan of brown. You know, so we're going to give ourselves some brown. I don't know why people are so phobic of burnt umber. I love burnt umber. Oh, yeah, I love burnt umber. Me too. It's not brown, it's Thank brown. Thank you. I'm just kidding. It's funny, I watched some, some <laughs> clickbait video about color, and they were talking about how brown is technically not a color or it's it actually is dark orange or dark yellow and then the funny thing is that's how i've always thought about it it's dark uh, dark orange or dark yellow all right we're going to squeeze out a little bit more color here brown because i just like it and then white because we're working with opaque paint and don't worry about that don't worry about it so um maybe you work off to the side a little bit or we can move this over we could move your, we could just tape this up and move it over so you got a little more room if you need to. But here we go with the brown and with the white. All right. Uh, you know, you'll start to find maybe that, that uh, another part of painting is having a nice uh, spread where you can spread out and put your stuff around and make a mess or not worry about what's going on with uh, the floor. Or I, I even, I wear gloves. I'm going to put my gloves on right now. And not that the paint is particularly toxic, but I just got in the habit, and and now I I don't like the feeling of the the paint on my fingers. Oh really? Yeah, and 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 I've gone plein air painting, and you know you might be off in the woods, and and you can take these gloves off, and your hands are clean, you know. Yeah. So I'm going to squeeze my colors out in the same kind of upside down pattern here. Yellow. White. This is not watercolor, guys. This is oil painting. So what do I got? I got my... I got my palette, I got my brushes. Let's get some let's get some water in these cups. How about it? Oh, there you go. Yeah. All right. Okay. I like it. And again, like, you know, we're, we're going to keep it really simple. It's more about the shapes of color than, uh, than, than drawing like this uh, perfect. And, and uh, there, that looks good. Great. Good, good. Perfect. Eyes, lips, nose, hair hanging down. You got your shirt, whatever that is. If you don't like the color you're wearing, you know, maybe you pick pink and white instead of the check, checker shirt. That, perfect, perfect. You got the division right down the center. All right. Oh, look, you're even blending. That's like next <laughs> level. Know, We're no blending yet. No blending. This is a blend-free zone. So um, everybody's got some paper towels. I always like to dip my brushes in my, in my water first just to, get, just to get stuff up into the hairs. And if you look at the little sheet here, let's mix the color wheel. Let's just do it, okay? So we get a freebie right off the bat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dip into this yellow here. And you can see, boy, that yellow is really translucent. You know? But I'm going to paint that yellow. 
right here. And, you know, part of, of painting is getting familiar with the pigments and stuff. So I'm going to kind of lay quite a swath of that right onto that, right on there. Boom, yellow. Um, if you want to know another reason why I wear gloves, it's so I can do this. I can squeegee this color out of the brush, especially with oil paint, and then just save it. Now I'm going to wash this brush in some water. All right, now the next color. If you feel like it. So there's, a, yeah, there's that little spot where it says yellow. The next color is going to be red. Okay, now you can see out of the tube that you got the red here, and it's got a particular value to it. You can see if I pull out my little uh, grayscale here, I've got a little testing grayscale here. This red is, it's darker than white, obviously. It's, it's lighter than black. And it's about, it's about, it's, you know, it's about between middle and the dark as it comes out of the tube, yeah. you know. So add a little bit of white to that. I got, I got my red here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just add a teeny, just a smudge, just to start to see what it looks like. It lightens it up just a tad. It cools it off just a little. It's a little bit pink. You can see on my palette if you ever want to come up and look at it. Just a teeny tiny bit. And I'm going to put that right in, that ye in the red swatch. Like that, right where it says red. Now the next, uh, since we've already got red and yellow, let's do a secondary color, all right? Take that brush that's got red in it already and, move and grab a bunch of yellow now, okay? And start to mix that red brush with that yellow and smash them together. The yellow is really weak. So just a dirty red brush and a big splob of yellow, and you got yourself a nice orange. Nice orange. It's, you know, again, it's, it's the consistency of, I don't know. It's like no consistency I can, it's like a jelly, kind of, jelly-like. But I like it, I like it, I'm fine with it. Okay, if you need to add more yellow, you might, because the yellow is so... Uh, weak. So I'm going to add a little more yellow and I'm just going to put that orange swath onto my color wheel. We're halfway done with the color wheel already, guys. Mine looks like that. Now technically you want that orange to feel like it's halfway between the yellow and the red, maybe. Yeah, you know, make sure that you're not mixing a, a red orange or... <coughs> So we're starting to get a rainbow going on on this palette. I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to wash it. And I'm going to maybe wash it real good, rinse it out, dry it off with the paper towel. And let's go, uh, let's go into the blue. Okay. But actually, since we're going to blue, grab your, grab your other brush. Grab, a, grab yourself a clean brush that hasn't been used, got any orange or whatever in it. And that blue, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to grab a big blob of it, and then we're going to grab a little bit of white. A little bit, because the blue gets light really quick. Okay. I got too light too quick. I'm going to grab half of that off to the side. There we go. That looks better. Blue, yum, yum. And this is called ultramarine blue. It's kind of my favorite blue. I'm going to put that blue right on the, uh, on the color wheel. Technically, it's a blue-violet. I guess it's a violety blue. So that means it would make a good purple. So now we got this. Okay. Now with this brush that's got a bunch of blue in it, all right, I'm going to make a pile in the front, in front of the yellow, and I'm going to grab that yellow, and I'm going to mix it with my dirty blue brush, just like I mixed yellow with the dirty red brush, okay? Because we're going to mix green. 
So it's going to be mostly blue. I mean, uh, it's going to be a lot of yellow because the yellow is pretty weak. And then we're going to start to mix that blue into it that was from the dirty brush. And we want it to get to about the same lightness as the red was, I guess. So I end up with something that looks kind of like this. Okay, maybe I need a, maybe I want a little more yellow. Who knows? But you don't want to make it kind of like a tennis ball color. You want it to feel green and in between these other two. Now I want to go around and just look at how everyone's doing on this. Because the uh, I'm I'm tr I'm working I'm really trying to kind of uh, frost this thing. Yeah, good, good. I'm I'm getting a nice uh, thick layer of that on there. Um, so interesting. How did that? Let's see. The uh, the green could probably be a little more intense, but it's, it's all right. And everybody, we're struggling with the yellow being super weak, so I'm going to squeeze out more yellow for everybody because that is definitely the frailest of the colors. Good, good, looking good. You know, the oranges and the greens are probably most affected by that weak yellow. So let's give everyone another schmutz of that. Bloop. Bloop. All right. So that's the the last the last color that we that we're going to make here is the purple, and I'm probably going to use the brush that I've washed pretty good that I use with the red and the orange, and take some of this red that you've mixed, and some of this blue that's about the same lightness, and just kind of mix those two together, and as I mix them. If I add more blue, it gets bluer. If I add more red, it gets redder. I'm going to try to find kind of like that halfway point between the two. And you'll notice it's not the, it's not the best purple ever. All right? It's sort of a grayish purple. And that's because the red isn't quite as pink. It's not a pinky red. Uh, but we can get a, a pretty decent violet. The old masters would be more than happy with these colors. They'd be like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? <laughs> Except they'd be like, your yellow is a little weak, huh? A little bit weak on the yellow. But the purple is a little darker than my blue, and there we go with a, with a nice wheel, color wheel. And that's just to show you guys all the potential that all these pigments have right here. Now, chiaroscuro. The illusion of light and shadow is a magic trick, okay? And it's a magic trick because you take advantage of someone's false assumptions. When you get that, when you get the right arrangement of values going on a canvas, someone cannot look at it and see anything but what you've painted, you know? Um, but now, I want you guys to, what's your favorite color? Red, purple. Purple? Blue. Okay, well, whatever is your favorite color, I want you to, to uh, on somewhere on your palette, I want you to mix kind of a grayed out version of your favorite color to the same lightness as this brown piece of paper that you're mixing on, okay? Because you can see the blue is darker than the paper, the yellow is lighter than the paper, the red is about as light, the same value as the paper, the brown is darker, the white is lighter. So I want you, my favorite color is blue. So I'm going to take some of this purple and some of this white, and I'm going to mix sort of a grayish blue, all right? But I'm going to add white to it so it becomes the same lightness as the paper that I'm mixing on, okay? Which is about middle value. Paper bag color is middle value, all right? Now, would you ever... I've mixed this color here now. It's kind of a, maybe I could make it more purple or more blue or whatever, all right? And it's about, if I squint down, if I squint down, then and don't make it, make it a little dirty. 
make the color a little dirty, okay? So like this for me is the same value as the paper. See how you almost don't see it right there? The same value as the paper. So I, like I like this color. That's kind of a nice color. That's about the same value as the paper, you know. So is that. Yeah, yeah, I got a little purplish. Yeah, yeah, by mixing the blue and the, and the red. So get a little dirt in there, get a little dirt. Um, and we want it to be the same value as the paper. Uh, well, that would mean like uh, if, I, if, I got put some, if I got some green and I tinted some green and some orange together, you know, and I start to mix that into my pile, that's like dirtying it up, okay? Another good way to make dirt is if you take the, the brown and add white to the brown, to the same, and it becomes almost like exactly like the color of the, of the palette paper. You know what I mean? So you're going to want to mix values that are like that yeah. value. Yeah. So by you're, you're going to need to go into to, into some red. And then I, was I would go into some brown. Oh, I'm just going to drag it in. Okay. I didn't know we could. Something grab. around like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. You gotta you gotta mix that stuff like together. You know, and for you, I, I want to see you mix more piles. Okay. You're getting so thin. We gave you a lot of colors here. So what color do you like? Red. You like red. And so I want you to mix red to about to the value of the paper. So okay. you can do that. Okay. Yes. What other color have you got out here? Uh, well, you could add, some, yeah. you got some brown and white. Right. You could get brown and white to the same value. Nice. Okay. So now I'm going to add a little white to that. So now that's like not as bright. Correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now if I take some of this blue and I start to mix some blue to that same value as the paper, you know. Right. Now we got another spot. We got three colors. Somewhere around in here, you're going to find kind of a nice neutral. neutral red. Yeah. You see how I did that? I did. Maybe we'll do that over here too. So what, what color do you like? Purple. You like purple. Okay. So well then you got a nice kind of a neutral purple. It's a little darker than the paper. That's cool. What about you? Blue. You like blue. Me too. So I, I like what the way I like to do it is whatever, however many pigments I have. The first thing I'm going to do is I'll go. Okay, well that's as, that's blue, and that's about the same lightness as the paper. I could take some brown here, and I could mix some white and brown, and I could get that to the same lightness. Also, you know what I mean? See, like that brown almost disappears now, but it's still opaque. I could even take you know some of this red. And I could lighten that red up to that same value as the, as the paper. Just about there, you know. So now I could start to mix maybe this into this. Another place I could go, there's really only one more place. So I could go in towards green. You know, so I'll get some blue and some yellow. And then I lighten that. So it's about the same value as the paper. That's, uh, that's kind of a, a helpful way to, to start to mix colors, you know what I mean? Because I've mixed four colors to the same value, and instead of mixing one blah, 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 blah color, I can go, oh, I'm going to make it more blue, I'm going to make it more pink, oh, more green, more gray, and you can kind of jump around a little. That's how I think when, when I'm doing that. Okay, now, the part that's going to be crazy is where it says shade white, okay? I want you to paint this, I want you to paint your color right there. All right? And I want, then I want you to ask yourself, would I ever think that this is white? If I looked at this, if you looked at that square, would you ever say to me, oh, that's white? Yeah. No, you wouldn't. Not, in, not unless you put it in the context of a painting that has, is creating a, this representation that Van Gogh's talking about. And then you can see also why having a little, a little mister mm -hmm. now and then uh, it helps your colors to not dry out as quick, all right? So, uh, now uh, on your selfie now, okay, you can see like I'm gonna I'm gonna, I've got my selfie here and I'm going to have skin tone and my beard and I have a, a sh let's say a black shirt with a white collar and a white edge around here, all right? This square that I've just painted 
where I mixed my favorite color and then I mixed it to the value of the tone of the canvas. I want you to, to paint that there. That's going to be white in the shade. And then I'll, on one side or another, this collar here, I'm going to say this is white. All right? And then I'm going to say that this over here is also white. So I'm just going to put a couple, uh, wherever that little white part is, maybe it's a little choker or you give yourself a headband or you could be the, the lettering on your shirt, star, you know. That's something white. So we're going to work with shade first, work in the shade. And, you know, it kind of makes sense to do. I remember reading a book that was a bunch of painters' suggestions from Da Vinci. And, and he was like, you know, because at the time that they were figuring out chiaroscuro, they were still, didn't quite have it. It was still a little nebulous, their understanding of it. And for Da Vinci, like, the shade was like a, 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 a mystery, you know. Okay. So now, the next color we're going to mix, is, now, uh, if you look down here, you'll see it says local colors, all right? Now, you could look at any painting of anything, and you could write down a list of everything that's in the painting. Oh, there's a flower, there's a, there's a blue vase, oh, there's a woman sitting there, you know. It, there's never an infinite number of things in a painting, okay? And uh, so in this selfie sample that we're doing here, you've got skin and hair and a couple different color fabrics, okay? Um, so what is local color, okay? Local color is... It can be a little hard to explain, but it's the actual color of the thing. And no, independent of lighting, the relationship of local colors is a chord on the grayscale that does not change. Okay, so if I take some of this brown and I take some white and maybe some of this orange, all right, I can mix a color that would look exactly like my arm, all right? That's mixing a local color. There, that's like my arm band-aid color. Maybe that's even too pink. You know, it's more like sort of greenish or something. But with these colors, you could do that. You could mix the exact color of the thing itself, you know. And if I put this color that disappears on my arm on my pants, it doesn't, it's not because my pants are almost black, or blue, you know. Local color is like makeup. Women's makeup is the local color. You know, except it's a little lighter than your skin tone, a little darker, and you create little highlights or whatever with your skin and stuff. But one thing that doesn't change is I'm not a chameleon. My skin doesn't change color in relationship to other colors of things in the world, okay? So if I take this white paper towel and I put it across my arm, you can see that my skin tone is darker than white, and it's warmer it's darker and kind of pinkish, orangish, right? But it's dark by a certain amount, you know, and everybody in here has got kind of the same complexion, but if there was someone that was African-American or whatever, they would just be a little darker, but they would still be warmer and browner, so to speak, okay, than white, because white is like an extreme local color. You can't get much whiter than white, yeah? So, Instead of thinking, what is a recipe for skin tone? And believe me, if you guys take painting classes, you're going to get a teacher at some point give you a recipe for skin tone. Instead, you should think about skin tone. Okay, so I'm saying this is white, something white in the shade. I'm putting mine up here along with yours. So it's sort of a grayish purple, blue violet or something like that, all right? So if I'm saying that is to skin, then what is going to be skin tone in relationship to white? It's darker and warmer. Okay, so whatever I said was white, whatever color, if it's greenish or grayish or reddish, your skin tone is going to be a little bit darker or a lot, depending on how dark you are. If it's Donald Trump, it's going to be more burnt sienna orange. Okay, uh, but... What, you know, whatever it is, if I, I, all I need to do is just maybe start to mix some of this purple or red into this pile of white already, 
and I could say, well, look, that is darker and warmer, okay? I could just take brown and add white to it so it's a little bit darker, just a little bit darker than what I'm saying is white. And I could say this could be my skin tone. It's darker and warmer. Does that make sense? So you're thinking in terms of it less as a formula and more as where it falls in the grayscale, you know? And by starting off with what we're a color that's actually middle gray and saying that that's going to be our white. Okay, so I'm going to go a little darker, a little more purple, a little, little brown. And I'm going to say that that right here, boom, that's going to be my skin. Okay. Darker and warmer. So that is to that, if that makes, starts to make sense. White in shadow is to skin in shadow. As here it is like a white paper towel on my arm and my arm, okay? It's not a formula, it's, a, it's an understanding and a relationship. Uh, so, now what I'm gonna do, since I've mixed a pile of darker and warmer, there you go, there you go, and then depending on how dark you wanna make it. And don't be afraid to, don't, don't just add brown, you know, it's really just a value. If it starts to get too gray, maybe you're gonna mix some, mix some orange into it. That's pretty subtle. You might be, that would be like someone who's really fair. Okay. Does that make sense? A little bit? Yeah, 